Hello everyone, my name is Dominic Jamore. I want to thank you all for tuning in to the second, probably third best thing you've heard all week. We have a great show for you today that includes the latest and greatest Comic-Con news slash trailers, because that's a whole lot of what we're going to talk about today, along with our assorted thoughts and opinions ranging from insightful to downright obnoxious. This is the I've Had Better Movies podcast. James, what's our first topic of the day? Of course, it's the Justice League teaser trailer. Initially, it was released as just like a sizzle reel, but now people are saying, no, it's a legit trailer and all that stuff. So we're going to say trailer just so we don't confuse anyone. All right. We'll call it a trailer. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Released at Comic-Con. Amazing. It really was. If I could think of another word that starts today, that'd be great. <laughs> the trailer, it... it Basically, it gives you an insight into what Justice League is going to be about. It picks up near where the last uh, Batman vs. Superman ends. And it has Batman and slash Bruce Wayne slash Ben Affleck going out on recruiting trips, essentially. And it starts out with us meeting Aquaman for the first time. And how badass was that? Yes, I was just going to say, who looks very badass? Oh, it looked incredible. And, like, you feel... Like his badassness. Like he only yeah. says like three words in the entire thing. He's like, "Yep, talk." Like it, it helps oh, because okay. him walking the streets, he's a big guy. Yeah, he he's a mammoth. And I'm curious to see how big he actually is because Ben Affleck's a big guy too. Yeah, Ben Affleck's like six three. Yeah, I think he's six four or something. Well, I'm, I'm Momoa's around there at least. He might be like so they, they might be around the same size, and I think. It's just the movie magic that makes him look... Momoa might be a little taller. Momoa might be like 6'5". Yeah, so we see that, and then we see him interacting with Wonder Woman, and then uh, the scene that James and I actually talked about a few weeks ago, so scoops on that. Uh, the scene with inside the Flash's apartment slash home where Bruce Wayne kind of introduces himself and throws the battering at the Flash. That was in the trailer, so that was awesome. And uh, we see... Them all kind of in costume at the end. So that was pretty... Oh, and we get introduced to Cyborg. Yep. So a lot of crazy it's stuff. Short dialogue, but it, it works. Yeah, it, it was it was funny. It was serious. It hit, the, it hit the nail right in the head of what I needed slash what I think everybody needed in order to have their faith restored in Zack Snyder and these movies. Yeah, and they definitely tried to show as much humor as possible. Oh, yeah. I think that's why Ezra Miller had... The most speaking parts. Yeah, he talked for between a while. Between him and Ben Affleck. Yeah. Um, but I just, I love that scene. I'm still excited to see it when it's actually put together in the film all at once. Mm -hmm. um, I like the way that when Ezra Miller said, like, yes, he was going to do it immediately, Ben Affleck kind of had this, like, smirk. Yeah. He was like, really? <laughs> you're not going to fight me on this? Like, yeah. you're not going to try to punch me like Aquaman did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite part? I think Jason Momoa. Just just him in general? Well, I was going to... I think when he lifts up Batman. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Just shows his, his sheer size. Mm -hmm. And Jason Momoa is 6'4", Ben Affleck's listed as 6'3 and a half. Okay, yeah, so they're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, with the hair. Both big dudes. And, yeah, a little bit of movie magic probably. They added like an inch or something on Momoa. Yeah, I mean, they can make Tom Cruise look 6'5", so... Yeah. Uh, my favorite part actually also involved Jason Momoa... That scene where he's like outside and he's chugging the bottle of sup then and he just Probably throws like it away and then or something. Yeah, and then just gets engulfed by the wave. That was so awesome. Like I was like, Oh, that's so cool. Yep. And it was bright as in uh Visually? Like, visually. Not tone. No. Now you're confusing. Yes. <laughs> um if you listen to the last episode, I made a, a comment about how dark Star Trek was, uh, visually. But uh, just going off of like this compared to Batman vs Superman, because like somebody upped the brightness level on the iPhone while shooting this movie compared to Batman vs Superman. Yeah, so I thought that was cool. It is very cool that Justice League or Zack Snyder and everyone they kind of listened to what people thought of Batman vs Superman and mm -hmm. are making the changes necessary to hopefully make this a better film. Yeah. You, yeah, fingers crossed. And it's also, I am a bit apprehensive because I loved everything that Batman for Superman put out. Like, their Comic-Con trailer was amazing. Arguably the best trailer I've ever seen. 
So I'm keeping this a bit at arm's length because I don't want what happened with Batman vs Superman happen for me here. Like I don't want to go into that deep dark depression again. Yeah, that hurt for a couple months. Yeah. What did you guys think of the trailer? Let us know in the comments section below. Hit us up on Twitter at IHP Podcast or send us an email to IHP Podcast at gmail.com. That's the one. All right, on to our next trailer, which is going to be Wonder Woman. Another DC Films, another one featuring Gal Gadot. Obviously, she was in Justice League as well. Uh, what did you think of this trailer? It felt a lot like Thor. Yes, they, they they there's definitely that kind of feel. There's the North. Well, Thor is Norse mythology, where Wonder Woman is a bit more Greek. That part I like. Yeah, no, really, would never guessed. <laughs> Overall, I thought it was a decent trailer. Nothing particularly stands out. Um, really, not even the action. Like that was some badass act where she's spinning on the shield and cutting down dudes with a sword. And I felt like we saw some of that in. Batman vs Superman though we did, but I mean, okay, all right, it was cool. Yes, it was. Chris Pine could have been played by a lot of people. I don't know if he's the I'm right choice. I'm gonna fight choice. you on that one. I'm gonna fight you on that one. Okay, I'm waiting for the fight. Oh, okay, we're gonna just go right into it. Yeah. I thought you were gonna list. No, um, I'm curious now. Okay, my argument. Okay, so first off, trailer. The movie's going to be directed by Patty Jenkins. And I, from what I've seen, she's going to do a great job. Like, this trailer was awesome for me. I liked it a lot. The reason I think Chris Pine is perfect casting... Because he's passive? And is able to be next to a stronger woman? That That's a solid point. But I was going to go, because he's so damn charming, and he can pull off that, like... I don't want to say comedy in a sense, but, like, that kind of sarcastic comedy where it's like... Uh, much like he does with Captain Kirk or things like that, or like his character from This Means War, to where like he's a confident guy, but at the same time, like he's uber charming and can make jokes and seem like he's flirting, like he's very flirtatious. Okay. And in this movie, because a lot of people are worried about Gal Gadot, Gadot, basically having her own franchise because she's a relative newcomer to acting. No matter what you say, she used to be a model. She used to be in the Israeli military. She hasn't been acting for very long, so the idea of having the entire movie on her back is scary to some people. From what I've seen, I think she can handle it, but at the same time, she's going to come off stiff at certain points, no matter what. But the format of this film makes sense for that to happen. You ha- you're have you going to have Chris Pine to like alleviate some of that pressure because he can be flirtatious, and when Ga- uh, Gal Gadot comes off stiff... That flirtatiousness and uh, charm will rub off on the scene, and it's only going to make it better because she's coming to this new world, and she's supposed to be stiff. Like, it's going to be the first time she's seen an ice cream cone and things like that. And she'll be like, ooh, an ice cream. What is this magic? So basically Thor. A little bit, yes. But I don't think... I mean, I think he will do a better job than Natalie Portman. There we go. Yeah, that's the name I was trying to think of. Uh, yeah, like she, he, he's more charming than Natalie Portman, uh, greatly. Yeah, so I, I think it. I think they're the perfect fit. Maybe it's also because I really like Chris Pine. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I like Chris Pine. I'm not too. gonna deny that. I do too. But I, I think he's the the perfect Steve Trevor. Um, some of the other things I like. I am obsessed with the idea that this movie takes place during World War One. I. I think that is so freaking cool because you. Most war films and stuff like that, you always hear about World War Two and things like World that. World War Two, Vietnam. Yeah, World War One. It's it's not exactly the forgotten war, but we get to see so little and not as glamorous. No, and the type of fighting that went on then, the trench warfare and things like that, it was very, just very aggressive and dirty. Yeah, so I I'm really looking forward to that aspect. They make comment about how uh, Wonder Woman was made by Zeus in the comics. She's got a couple of different origins now but uh one of them is she was formed out of clay and then became to life i'm curious if they'll go that deep into the comic history or if they'll just leave it as i was made by Go- zeus almost said goose <laughs> I, th- I think the- tom cruise's partner in top gun made me <laughs> <laughs> he really did die <laughs> um 
I think they're they're not gonna go that far with it, and I think they're just gonna state that she was made by Zeus. Probably. Uh, I really dug the uniform in this. Like the they did the close up on her legs, and like they it looked like stature wise, she's perfect for this. Yeah, yeah, she fits so well. I love this movie from beginning to end. I thought it looked great. You you say it felt like Thor, and I agree with that. I feel like if you took Thor and combined it with Lord of the Rings, that's kind of the movie. like everything on Themyscira should be Themyscira. It looked like stuff out of the Lord of the Rings for me, like El uh, Elrond Elendil, whatever that where place the elves live. That's what it reminded me of a lot of. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so that was the Wonder Woman trailer. Uh, let us know what you guys thought in the comments section below, or you can leave us a comment on our Facebook wall. That's the I've Had Better podcast page. All right, James, what's our next story? Next trailer is Doctor Strange. Yeah, like I said, it's all trailers. We are a trailer park today. Yes, shake your head. Shake your head. <laughs> Um, this trailer, it's the second trailer. It definitely gives us our most in-depth story look. For example, um, we see Rachel McAdams is in this movie. We saw her for a glimpse, a glimpse in the first trailer, but it kind of felt like she was just a nurse or somebody at the hospital. But in this one, you can tell she's a romantic love interest. I thought that was solid for the trailer. It gives a bit more story and depth. This one's directed by Scott Derrickson, who has a horror background, which I think you can clearly tell from watching it. it uh, it's a bit freakier, uh, definitely some m- mind-bending stuff, so I thought that was cool. It tells the story of Doctor Strange, who is the uh, Sorcerer Supreme. He loses the ability to use his hands and then basically goes and finds uh, this mystic temple that... And, they teach him how to use magic and he has to study and practice and I liked how they made that like well how did you become a master surgeon no I'll study and practice exactly so I thought that was cool I liked seeing all the different characters you yeah. got you got more of uh Tilda Swinton's character Chutal Edgy Four's character and Rachel with Adams and Benedict Cumberbatch yeah of and course you, yeah and you got a couple of good looks at uh, Mads Mikkelsen as the yes. villain so yep. he looks badass and you got a real good look at some of the visuals they're going to use. Like that city scene where it's folding on top of each other, very Inception-like, and they're fighting on the sides of buildings. Mm-hmm. That looked awesome. Super confusing. Yeah. And this this feels like a movie that like, if you saw it in IMAX, you would either throw up or be mystified. Like This could be one of those movies where, like, I have to go see this in IMAX, yeah, I which would, I don't uh, think I've ever done before. No. I would definitely need a Dramamine before seeing this film. Oh, yeah. In terms of overall movie, I think Cumberbatch might be the most spot on casting. Acting wise, I'm not I'm just going strictly by look. Like you hold up a comic book and you hold up a picture of Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange and they are dead even. Like yeah. even uh Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans, like both of them, they're super close, but Cumberbatch might be perfect. Yeah, I agree. He looks the part. Um, I'm just not sure about his acting. Yeah, I, I don't. I feels a bit shaky. Yeah, we've talked about this in the past. I mean, he's a great actor. We just, I just, I don't fully buy his American accent. Yeah, that could be the problem too. Yeah, the soundtrack was really cool for this trailer. Mm-hmm. It reminded me so much of Trod Legacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that beat kind of technically, but yeah. yeah. So I thought that was really cool. And why can't they just have? Doctor Strange beat English. So is it that big of an issue? No, I would have made him. I easily would have made him English. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't think it has to. He doesn't have to be American. Yeah, they should have done that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the one thing I did not enjoy, I didn't like the Wi Fi joke at the end. <laughs> yeah. Super cheesy. It was. And, like, it. I also think, to be honest, and this is just some one of those things, like, it's going to create continuity issues for me. I know it is. Because it's, you know, at some point he's going to come back to the city and Rachel McAdams is going to be like, where have you been? And like, if he doesn't go like, you didn't get my emails? Like, and then look at Chiwetel Ejiofor 4 be like, and then Chiwetel Ejiofor 4 is like, man, we ain't got no Wi-Fi. That would be great. They're not going to do that though. No, no. They don't have the balls to. No. 
All right. So that was the Doctor Strange trailer. Do you have any more comments? Nope. All right. Then moving on. Next up, we have the Kong Skull Island trailer. Uh, the reboot of the classic Kong film, a bit different. This one takes place on Kong's home. And so far, it doesn't look like we're going to be moving into the city or anything. It's not a, uh, it's not going to follow the same pattern that previous, like the Peter Jackson or the 1970s version or the original version where they, it's the Kong comes to the city, climbs the Empire State Building, things like that. It looks like a different film. Uh, it stars... Tom Hiddleston, Sam Jackson, Brie Larson, John Goodman. John C. Riley. Yeah, so... Thomas Mann. Uh, also stars a giant gorilla, like biggest Kong we've ever seen. Is Kong a gorilla? Ape? Is he an ape? Cool. Well, gorilla. He's just like bigger Tarzan friends. Okay. Right? Yeah, we'll go with that. What do you think of the trailer? Overall, I thought it was okay. I think thought they did a nice job with the build up to see the size of Kong. Um I liked how they did the the bloody handprint or paw print, ape ape print. I, don't I think know. you can call it hand cuz they have opposable thumbs. Okay, handprint. I like that. John Goodman. I thought did okay. I mean, he didn't he just had some dialogue. Mhm. Um, I thought that was fine. Sam Jackson seemed like Sam Jackson, which I think we have to be okay with at this point. Because it's not going to change. <laughs> and uh, Tom Hiddleston didn't do anything crazy. Shot a gun a few times. Looked big. So I wonder if he is putting on some weight for Bond. Bond. Yeah, I... Uh, That's kind of my takeaway. Yeah. This is actually... I don't really like this trailer. Um, and that's kind of going against everybody I listen to and all of the internet. Like, There's a lot of buzz around this. But for me, it just nothing really connected. Um I didn't particularly like John Goodman. He just it felt a little cookie cutter, like that guy who was like, "Oh, I told you the world doesn't belong to us." And then you, angry Sam Jackson, I do not like uh, a lot of his dialogue. Like as soon while he was speaking, all I could think was like, "This sounds a whole lot like the speech he gives before he gets eaten by a shark in Deep Blue, Deep Blue Sea. Sea. Like, I, like, if I close my eyes and listen to this trailer, I just see him walking around an open pool. <laughs> like, yeah. So I wasn't crazy about that. I'm also not super crazy about the effects. Hair is tough to do. Like, with Godzilla, you get away with it because scales you can do very well. Hair is tougher to do in CGI. And granted, we didn't get to see a whole lot of Kong. We just got, a, like, a couple of hands, and we got a like half of his face and I just I didn't particularly like it and then there's one scene in the trailer that really bugs me it's where uh, right before I think Kong screams or something goes down where they're in the middle of a field and all of a sudden everybody turns around and it's focused on Brie Larson and she like is looking and she's got this shocked look on her face and you look behind her and after the sound goes off everybody starts shooting And it almost looks like Tom Hiddleston is shooting right over her head. And, like, she doesn't budge. There's no, like, ducking or anything like that. And it's like, oh, she's in shock from seeing the giant ape. No, that just looks like an error. Like, yes, bad positioning. And I couldn't get that image out of my head. So, overall, I'm going to see this movie, obviously. The actors involved with it, minus Sam Jackson, because I'm not a huge Sam Jackson fan. Like, Brie Larson is gorgeous and a... one of the best actors in Hollywood right now. And Tom Hiddleston, same. He's a gorgeous man. One of the best actors in Hollywood right now. I just... It was a bit of a miss for me. Maybe the next trailer would do better. And this is a short trailer. It's practically a teaser. It was like a minute and a half. So, those are my thoughts. Okay. I respect those. I appreciate that you respect those. I respect that you respect my respect. We respect... We are respectful of each other. <laughs> All right, let's respect ourselves to the next topic. Well, you skipped one. Well, I didn't rate these in order. All right, well, the next trailer... There we go. ...is King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. That's the one. Directed by Guy Ritchie. Starring Charlie Hunnam. Tells the classic tale of King Arthur, the man who pulled the sword from the stone. Uh, It's a bit of a... It feels like a bit of a funner version, a bit more of a fantastical version... Definitely feels like a Guy Ritchie film. 
was just going to say that. Yes, exactly. It feels like a version of Sherlock Holmes. One and two. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Especially the opening. Like, that whole we- much. that weird running scene. Like, I'm sure the director is like, no, nah, this is a super cool technology that we're using. But it just doesn't. Like, I don't like the way it looks. Yeah, the, and the then moving camera. Yeah, jumping into that, like, interrogation scene with the weird music going on. And it doesn't feel like it was set back then we've talked about this in the past charlie hunnam is english slash from the united kingdom i'm not really sure where he's from but when he uses the english accent it sounds weird it sounds very weird i don't know if it's just because i'm so used to him speaking as Jax teller on sons of anarchy Mm -hmm. or if it's his english accent doesn't fit his face (laughs) Yeah, no, because he looks American. I mean, he could easily pass for an yeah. American. There's one line that he has, the one where like he's talking about like you have an army. I'll talk, but I'm not going to fight. When he says that, it sounds to me exactly like Ben Kingsley in Iron Man three, like after he breaks from the Mandarin character and he's like, "I'm just an actor. I just do this for the pay, mate." Like, yeah, completely it, overdoing it, and it almost sounds Australian. Yeah, a little bit, and like. I'll talk. Like, it sounded so weird to me. Yeah. Other story-wise, like, the second or third time I watched it, I started to notice how much, like, magic was going on. Yeah. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, I wanted more of a gritty, down-to-earth feel. And now I realize, like, you don't want to go all the way to Clive Owen's version to where, like, it was the realest story of King Arthur or who King Arthur probably was, but... You want to keep some of that fanta- fantasy magic, but like at one point, I'm pretty sure you see Jude Law like holding a fireball, mm-hmm. like he's Mario. <laughs> and I was yep. like, oh, that's weird. Not really sure how I feel about this film. I I'm a huge fan of Charlie Hunnam, so like I want to see it. Do you see David Beckham is in the film? That makes sense. Guy Ritchie is like, hey mate, you're English, you're hot. I want to hang out with you. I used to date Madonna, you know. I can't do a British accent. That totally Sounds came Australian. off the train, you know. <laughs> but uh, Australian, yeah. if you were going for that, that was great. <laughs> if I was going for Australian, that was wonderful. <laughs> All right, uh, you have any other thoughts on the trailer? No, just that uh, on paper, this looks like a good movie. Yeah, and the I, cast yeah. is 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 good. Yeah, and I know like production of it has had trouble. Like, they, this movie was supposed to come out last year, I think. I think it's just expensive to yeah. do this type of period piece with this many people. Yeah, I heard they had to do, like, go all the way back to the drawing board and, like, rewrite the script at one point, like, during filming, so. Not a good sign. Yeah. Odds are this movie doesn't make money, just because you know, from the visuals alone and all that, and it's probably going to be, like, a $150 million movie at least. And Yeah, that's conservative. All right, so that was the King Arthur trailer. Let us know what you guys thought in the comments section below, or you can hit us up on Twitter, at IHB Podcast. All right, so that was our last trailer of the day, he said in a questionable tone. Yes. All right, now we get to move on to the normal stories. Not many, uh, only two. So, James, what's that first one? According to The Hollywood Reporter, NBC Universal plans to greenlight two DreamWorks animation movies per year. The goal is for these titles to compete with Disney, who is already committed to two films per year for the foreseeable future. Forever. The first film slated to be released is Shrek 5. Yes, I said Shrek 5. Yeah. If you guys are wondering what happened to 4, so am I. (laughs) (laughs) What are your thoughts on the film and expanded DreamWorks projects? Uh, and do you remember Shrek 4? I do not. Because no. I do not either. <laughs> I remember Shrek 1, obviously. Great movie. Shrek 2, I remember. Shrek 3 is the one with Justin Timberlake? We need to find that out. Because I did not even know JT was in a Shrek. Yeah, Shrek the 3rd. He plays King Arthur. All right, we got Shrek. Shrek 2. Shrek the 3rd. Is it Shrek Forever After? I would assume so, since 4 is in the title. Oh, that's spelled different. Don't confuse me. Rumpelstiltskin tricks Ah. a midlife crisis burden Shrek into allowing himself to be erased from existence and cast in a dark alternate timeline where Rumpel rules supreme. Right, yeah, now I remember it. Time travel. Interesting. Didn't see it, but 
Yeah. I think it's a good idea. As we've seen this year, animation is dominating the box office. And as long as you keep the budgets in control, you make money. Like, Secret Life of Pets cost $75 million, and it's already made close to 300 worldwide. I think just with the fifth one maybe difficult for them, the way that they're going to have to pay some of these actors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Shrek... I mean, how many reoccurring voices are there on this? going to be a lot yeah Eddie Murphy ain't cheap no um, god knows why though yeah who knows? at this point uh, uh, you should get like a tax break for using him <laughs> yeah I I buy the DreamWorks making multiple films a year I sell the Shrek 5 part I Agreed. I don't think Shrek 5 is a smart move no I, I have a feeling it's gonna be like Ice Age yeah that's definitely possible you could see a 20 million dollar week that's why budget is so important you, know, you if you you got to keep it low but like you said with the salaries you're going to have to pay, you're looking at probably at least 25 to $30 million just on salary alone. So I think more than that. You think so? Yeah, I don't think Mike Myers is cheap either. Yeah. Cameron Diaz, Antonio Banderas. Oh, I forgot about Antonio Banderas. Yeah. All right. Well, you have any thoughts on the topic? No, we can go on to the next one. Cool. What do you guys think? Or would you go to the theaters to see Trek 5? Do you like the idea of DreamWorks slash Universal coming out with multiple pictures a year? Is there an over 50% shot that there will be minions in Trek 5? Does Possibility. That, yeah, does that reinvigorate your interest in the series? No. All right, on to our next story. In what can only be subscribed, subscribed. Described. As, well, I meant subscribed. As you, as you can subscribe to the I've Had Better podcast at iTunes just by searching I've Had Better Movies, IHB Podcast, or I've Had Better. We should just pop right up. But back to the read. In what can only be des- described as the most bonkers story of the year, Variety released a story that the final film in the Divergent series, Ascendant, could skip the theaters altogether and instead head to a TV movie wrapping up the film franchise in an attempt to introduce new characters that could de- then develop into their own television spinoff. I know you are going to call this insane, but explain just how insane it is, James. It's more embarrassing than insane. Yeah. like Because they tried to split the third book yeah. into two films, just like every other franchise does. And it really backfired. It did. I mean, If they would have just done one complete film for the third book I don't think it would have been an issue mm-hmm. the movie probably would have done better because it didn't cut short and honestly I think it's a smart move on their part you think so? I think they're going to save a lot of money yeah but like is it better to spend the money to make this movie and hope you to make the spin off or just abandon the movie and then do a TV spin off series anyway like um, how this happened a couple of years ago with a movie called uh, The Mortal Instruments, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Uh, a movie with... It's awful, um, but it's got Lily Collins in it, and I really like Lily Collins. So you watched it, of I course. did. I've watched it several times. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing, like a little bit. But that movie, it was supposed to start a new franchise. Um, it had vampires and werewolves and monster hunters and all this but it bombed at the box office and the studio was like yeah we're not making another one of those so they waited a couple years and then last year it came out on what used to be abc family but is now called freeform as a television series now that also bombed and i'm pretty sure it got canceled already but is that a smarter move than trying because a are you gonna get shaylin woodley and uh, Theo James to and Jeff Daniels to go on to the TV. Like, are you gonna force them to yeah. honor I mean, their contracts? It, like, it, I'm sure it's got to be somewhere in their contract. Be like, if this goes to TV, we don't have to do it. Yeah, it's not the same type of film. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. It is smart to try to parlay this into a TV series because it it would probably work really well as a TV series. Yeah, I, I get the. The Lost or maybe a Sense of Walking Dead type of film or TV show. Um, so it's possible. Yeah. But I think you hit the nail on the head when we first started talking. When you said that they split the third book into two movies, they never should have done it. Because I, I, I liked 
two thirds of the first film. Up and I, I didn't like the final act. The second film, we we reviewed earlier this year. I thought it was garbage. Theo what? James, I liked in it. I think but. was it the second or the. Oh no, we did the third one. We did Sorry. the third. Uh, the second one is garbage. Yeah, I hate that movie. Like it's so bad. Yeah. And the third one again, garbage. But I thought Theo James was okay. Like he came across as an action star to mm-hmm. me, and I was looking forward to seeing not more of him in this franchise, but in other things. But yeah, this never should have happened. And the fact that if this goes through as a television show, whew, insanity. Yep. Very embarrassing. Yeah. What do you guys think? Are you? Do you feel embarrassed for the studio because this is headed to t- possibly headed to TV? Do you think they should, or should they just cut bait and head and wait a couple years and come out with the TV show anyway? Let us know in the comment section below, or hit us up on Twitter at IHB Podcast. Next up, we have the stuff we didn't have time for. Short one today, and unfortunately, these are all actually really good topics that I would want to talk about more. And to be honest, a couple of them I might bring up next week just to delve into a bit more because they're interesting stories. But to kick it off, Kurt Russell has been confirmed to play Chris Pratt's father, Ego, the living planet. Yes, he is playing a planet in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Next Brie Larson has been confirmed, a story that James and I talked about earlier in the year, as Captain Marvel. She was announced and brought on stage at Comic-Con. And last, Charlie Hunnam, who we referenced earlier for King Arthur, will not return for Pacific Rim 2. Which we've also discussed. Yeah. Um, James, of these stories, which one intrigues you the most? Kurt Russell. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of well, I knew about Brie Larson. I knew that was going to happen, mm-hmm. but definitely Kurt Russell did not see that coming. Mm-hmm. Kurt Russell getting in another franchise. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, it uh, it had been released that he was cast in the film, and there were rumors that he was going to play uh, Peter Quill slash uh, Chris Pratt's father for a few months. The role that he's playing, where he's he's um, playing a human plant, well, a uh, celestial planet, like he's a planet with a face in the comic books. It's pretty insane. Uh, just to give you guys a background on it, um, in the original Guardians of the Galaxy f- movie, they go to a place called Nowhere, and they say it's inside the head of a celestial, which in Galaxy, in Guardians of the Galaxy, they're these giant, like 2,000 mile high warriors, and Nowhere is a decapitated head of a celestial. Essentially... Kurt Russell is going to be playing that, but a living one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and most likely he'll like pro- either there'll be some way he'll be projected down and be normal size, but at in certain points of the film he'll be able to talk to Chris Pratt. But it's definitely intriguing for me. Yeah, for your life, and we've talked about that in the past. Uh, it's Charlie Hunnam not coming back for Pacific Rim Two. Uh, this honestly it Does, mi- <laughs> doesn't interest me. It makes me upset. Yes, likewise. It drops my interest in Pacific Rim 2 from like a 80% I want to go see this movie. I'm at like 37 maybe? Like it was a significant drop cuz like now like you have Boyega in the movie and I don't know if they if he can carry a film by himself at this yeah, point. It it's not even that Charlie Hunnam isn't in it and John Boyega is it's, I just don't know where the story's going. Yeah. It and also, that, that's what makes me worried. Yeah, and also, like, a couple weeks ago, we, or maybe last week, we talked about Scott Eastwood being cast. Yeah. And it kind of kicks up those rumors again that maybe they just recast Charlie Hunnam. Like, which if they do that, that's insane. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We, uh, it's, it's disappointing for sure. I want to thank you all for tuning in this week. If you like this show, please subscribe to the I've Had Better Podcast Network and like this episode. There's that little thumbs up button right up there in the middle to bottom right half of the screen. It's somewhere on there. It's on the page. You'll find it. You'll like it. Tell your friends to subscribe. It really helps. I think we're hovering hovering right around 18 at the moment. Be awesome to get above 20. Um, Make me feel really good inside. It would. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm asking for two people, two volunteers out there to be like, I support these people. You don't even have to drop a comment because none of you ever do. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at IHB Podcast and on Facebook. Go like the I've Had Better Podcast page. James, 
Tell the people where you at. I be at the Twitter at the underscore Kaiser underscore Soze on Facebook as Jimmy Langos. Please check out the website, www.ihppodcast.com. And please subscribe to our iTunes page. And you can find that by searching IHB Podcast, IHB Movies, I've Had Better Podcast. Yeah, all of those. Also, all of the trailers we talked about today, plus a couple that we didn't talk about because either James and I didn't have time or because it's like the fourth trailer in a series, such as in Fantastic Beasts. But you can find those at our website, www.ihbpodcast.com. All eight of the Comic-Con's biggest trailers are in one article, one place. Go find it, go share it, and let us know what you guys thought in the comment section below. You can also find your article or your review of Star Trek Beyond. Yeah, um, not going to lie, it's arguably the best one I've ever written. Uh I could be wrong, and that could be on my own opinion, but writing it, I thought I made some funny jokes. I thought I made some good points, and overall, I enjoyed writing it. So go look that up and uh, let me know what you guys thought. But I am Dominic Damore. You can follow me on Twitter at Dom Damore. That's D-O-M-D-E-M-O-R-E. Or on Facebook as Dominic Damore. James, how was your show today? Yeah. It doesn't matter how the show was today. Are you going to rock me right now? That's not even cool. I'll give you the people's elbow after this. <laughs> so was it good? Was it not? I'm going to pile drive you. <laughs> Tombstone. I'm going to stun your ass. Want some sweet tin music? Uh, good night, Choke everybody. slam. <laughs> <laughs>